So using the picture in your notes, we're going to label the numbers correctly, and then we're going to describe each of the following, um, basically just writing what's on this slide. So evaporation is when liquid goes to gas. So which number best corresponds with it? Well, we need to find water first off. There's water right below number one. It shows the arrows going up to the sky. Therefore, liquid's turning into gas. So number one's going to be evaporation. Um, precipitation says it's going to be like rain, snow, sleet, and hail. So it's got to be coming down to the ground. So which number represents it? Obviously the cloud where it's raining, number four. Then we have the runoff. The runoff runs along the land into a body of water. So it's got to be coming down. It's got to enter the water. Well, water was number one. Therefore, your runoff is going to be number five. Um, then we have our groundwater. The groundwater seeps. It percolates into the soil, and it's taken up by plants. Um, the groundwater is represented by number six. It clearly says soil, and it's entering the soil. Therefore, it is your groundwater. And the last one's your transpiration. Transpiration is evaporation from the leaves. Be very careful between this one and evaporation. Evaporation's coming off water. Transpiration's coming off your plants. So which one shows plants and it's coming up from the plants? It's number two. So you should have one evaporation, two transpiration, four precipitation, five runoff, and six groundwater. Do not worry about the rest of the numbers. They're not important in this section. Here's a picture that's already labeled for you showing you the different, um, the different forms that water can take. So it's showing you evaporation, transpiration, your runoff, your water vapor, your percolation, um, and so forth. It's just a labeled picture of what you just labeled yourself. Now we get to the carbon cycle. This is another cycle that you have to know. Um, it will be on the EOC. So what is the carbon cycle? Um, well, again, there's the different steps just as there are in the water cycle. Below is a picture that I want you to fill in the correct spots from these words. So respiration refers to cellular respiration, and that would be like your carbon dioxide. Um, so cellular respiration is going to be coming in to the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Combustion is the burning of woods and fossil fuels. So where you see the picture of the smoke coming out of the building, that's going to be your combustion. It's just as, let's say, um, Buckeye. Buckeye and Perry, that would be an example, as well as the one in Quietville. I don't know the name of it. But they're releasing um, combustion, which ends up being carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Then we have erosion, or um, that'll be your limestone, your calcium carbonate from the seashells. Um, your food is your carbohydrates. And death, the decomposer's release. Um, so at the very top of your picture, you should have carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Coming down to the plants, you should have photosynthesis. Coming up from the building, you should have combustion. Um, from the animal to the ground, you should have death and decomposition. Coming into the animal, you should have food. Coming from the animal and from the tree up to the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere should be your cellular respiration. Notice how photosynthesis comes in, cellular respiration comes out. We will cover that. So again, here's a picture showing basically what you should have. Um, it should match up pretty close to the picture that you have in your notes. Um, so make sure you have it filled in correctly. In this case, though, the steam's coming off the ship, not the building. So now on to trophic levels. But what is a trophic level? Tro each link in the food chain is known as a trophic level. So each time you move up a step, you're moving up a level. These represent a feeding step in the transfer of energy and matter in the ecosystem. 
Your biomass is the amount of organic matter comprising a group of organisms in a habitat. As you move up the food chain, both available energy and biomass decrease. Energy is transferred upwards but is diminished with each transfer. All energy is measured in joules. 90% of the energy is lost going to the next level and only 10% of the energy is available to the next trophic level. Um, on the next slide we're going to be filling in a chart with some of this information and I'll probably end up repeating it again. So like I said, all energy is measured in joules. 90% of the energy is lost going to the next level. And only 10% of the energy is available to the next trophic level. So you can see the very bottom, the yellow box, contains your producers, your autotrophs. Um, their energy contains 100%. So what's an example of a producer? Remember that this is going to be your grasses, um, your plants. Then we have the primary consumers, which are going to be your herbivores. Notice that their energy only contains 10%. 90% of it has been lost, so we only have 10% left. This again will be your bunnies, your cows, your horses, and so forth. Then we move to the pink box. The pink is your secondary consumers. This will be your small carnivores. Um, maybe not us, it could be us, but there's other examples you could do as well. Again, notice that the energy has dropped from 10% to 1%. The final box is going to be your tertiary consumers, which are your top carnivores. Um, let's say something that could eat us. Let's say a shark. A shark is going to be your tertiary consumer. There's plenty others you can choose as well. Um, but again, notice that they're only receiving 0.1% of the energy. Again, it has dropped 90%. Right now would be a good time to pause the video and actually work on this. Um, for the food web, label each organism. Some may have more than one label. Um, label P for producer, 1 for primary consumer, 2 secondary consumer, 3 for tertiary consumer, and 4 for quaternary consumer. Then you're going to label each animal as either a herbivore or a carnivore or an omnivore. So H, C, or O. Again, please pause the video so you can work on this. So what were they? Well, the eagle, I guess you could call it that, at the very top of the picture, he's going to be either, he's going to be a 2, 3, 4, and he's going to be a carnivore. Your snake is going to be a 2, 3 carnivore. Your fox will be a 2, 3, 4 carnivore. The squirrel is going to be a 1 herbivore because he's only eating the tree stuff from the tree. The bunny is going to be a one herbivore. Um, the frog is going to be a two carnivore. The butterfly is going to be a one herbivore. Um, I'm not sure what that lizard looking thing is, but it's a one herbivore. And your bird is going to be a one two. Um, it's going to be an omnivore. It eats both. Um, it eats both the tree and the animal. The main difference between a food chain and a food web is that the food web consists of just one path of energy. And the food web, um, the food chain consists of just one path of energy. Sorry for the mistake on your paper. And the food web consists of all possible paths of energy. Um, so the food chain, you can see it goes from one to the next to the next to the next. Or the food web, it can go left, it can go right, it can go forward, it can go backwards, it can go any direction. Um, so right now, up under this part of your notes, is a little worksheet that you're going to complete on a food web. Please pause the video and take time to answer the questions according to the worksheet. I'm not going to give you the answers to this worksheet because I really want you to do it. Um, if you are in class, we will go over it then after I've seen that everybody has at least attempted the worksheet. Um, the answers should be pretty easy to find according to the picture that's given in your notes.
This is an activity that you're going to be doing in class. If you're not here for class, um, please see me so you can get the picture so you can make your own. This will be something that you will not be excused from. Um, if you were absent, it needs to be completed. Um, everybody else who's in class, we will do this in class. You'll work as a group and we will get it done then. The ecosystem changes over time with a process known as ecological succession. Why might this happen? This could happen because of things that we sometimes cannot control. For example, we might have a disturbance, like a fire. There might be a new species that decides to move into the area. Love bugs. Oh. And then um, they're going to alter the environment as well as our cars and everything else that they destroy. There are two types of succession. You have primary succession and secondary succession. Primary succession is when a volcano forms a new island. That would be an example of it. It consists of pioneer species, which are the first organisms to live in a new habitat where soil is present. They are small, fast-growing plants. Primary succession starts with new land, then leads to grasses and shrubs and eventually trees. It takes quite a while to get there though. Secondary succession is the progression of new species, replacing the old species. This is the growth after a wildfire, hurricane, or human disturbance. Recovery does take place with natural disturbances, but it depends with but it depends with human disturbances on how bad we alter the environment. This is an activity that you will have to complete on a computer. It cannot be completed on the iPad due to the type of file that it is. Um, make sure you answer all the questions that go with it. It tells you exactly what to do and where to click to find out the correct answers. Seasonal variations do not last long. For example, winter, summer. And, that, and there is no drastic effect on the ecosystem. In the winter, plants lose their leaves. The CO2 levels are going to increase. In the summer, plants grow leaves. The CO2 levels are going to decrease. The ecosystem is prepared for, for the winter. For example, animals will either migrate or hibernate um, to cope with the winter.